<laughs> All right, we're gonna get going. See, these 15 minute ones are fast. All right, I'm on. So, aquamation. Crazy. So my friend Allison over here, she's like, I, I envision like this cauldron in the forest of like brewing acid and, and things like that. So it's not so much. <laughs> and thank you for coming to this aquamation talk. But um, by definition, cremation uh, in general is, is, is reducing the body down to, down to bone. Um, typically the catalyst is, is fire and that's what we're all you know, typically used to, right? Um, but with aquamation, it's basically the replacement of that heat source as the catalyst, but instead it's potassium hydroxide. Um, and we're gonna go over the process because you're like, what? Um, <clears throat> But bone is still, bone ash is still the, um, the end result. It's the, 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 the final product is, is still the same and that's what the client wants is the, is the pet's ashes back. So there's a lot of other names for this. Um, so water-based cremation, bio-cremation, water reduction. So there's a lot of um, also known as, um, and there's, you know, sometimes the industry, we, you know, they don't know what exactly to agree on and, and maybe it'll take a couple of years to see what, what sits best and so I think that's the biggest challenge right now is is what sits best in people's gut when they hear this um, and the emotional part of it um, so the difference between uh, burial and fire and and water is is the catalyst and the time so with burial to get down to reduce the body down to bones it takes about 25 years and there's microorganisms in the soil and the pH of the soil helps reduce the body down with flame, it's about two or three hours. It depends, of course, on the size of the pet. You guys are like, this is creepy. <laughs> yeah, it is a little bit. But uh, water, it, depending on the size of the machine, the, the pet size, it could take three hours or even 20 hours. Um, and the 20 hours is basically the machine and the pressure of the machine. And it's water with this potassium hydroxide. So w whatever, regardless of the, of the choice that, that, you, um, that is going to be used, you're left with bone ash, right? And then what happens afterwards? So um, it's just a, it's dependent, I'll show you. So with history though on, on our aquamation, it was actually over a hundred years ago was patented. So it's been technically around for a while, but not everybody's heard about it. And even, even today people are like, well, aqua what? Uh, in at the University of Florida, when we went to, to University of Florida, we had um, in our in our vet school aquamation. We just I didn't even know what it was. I was like, this is vat where things dissolve, is what I thought. And my I, and I honestly thought it was acid, right? So that's the point is I thought it was acid um, because I just I didn't know I was busy doing like becoming a vet. Um, but <laughs> it was actually at Shands for humans um, in the early 1990s. So it was already used for for human disposition. Um, before the pet industry. And today it's, it's, it's legal in about 15, 14, 15 states and you just have to kind of keep up with this and um, uh, to see where it's at. So I just have a little chart here of all the different states. Um, the, the color difference doesn't mean anything, but what, what's interesting is that in New Hampshire it was legal and then some religious groups lobbied to have it banned. So now it's not legal in New Hampshire anymore. So you think, why would the religious have it banned? Some believe it's disrespectful to the body. I, you know, and, and right, and, and fire is not. <laughs> you know, there, there might be some religions actually where fire cremation, they consider it to be, you know, not really, you know, very respectful to the body. You know, that, that's the thing is everybody's like, oh, this, this aquamation sounds so creepy. You know, if it was the other way around, if for 500 years all we've been doing is aquamation and then somebody says, I got this new thing, it's flames. <laughs> Everybody would be the same way, like, what? So melting, flaming, like, it's reducing down the body to ash. And how it happens, I mean, do I want to be sitting in a box with worms and microorganisms for 25 years? Uh, like, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think so. But, uh, so the process, basically, the pet is put into a pressurized stainless steel chamber. And I have some pictures later to show you. Uh, water is added and then also this uh, potassium hydroxide, but the pH is, is elevated to 11, so it's not acidic, it's actually alkaline. And that's where, when I was, I was in vet school, I didn't understand because I was thinking melting flesh and acid. But it's, <laughs> you have to be like that too. Um, and then the temperature is raised and there's, the different machines will raise the temperature to different levels and the pressure will be different as well based on the, on the machine. But um, those, uh, the water and the, and the, and the, and the alkaline, is, um, is gonna then start to be circulated. So there's gotta be a little bit of, uh, of circulation going on um, 
to make sure that the cremation process begins. And so then during that cycle, the body is going to be reduced down to bone fragments. Um, and then uh, the good part about aquamation is that there are zero emissions in, in greenhouse gases. And that's, that's probably the biggest benefit that people have come to realize and that may attract an owner to this option. How many people here have aquamation in their areas? Okay, so, so a couple, right? And, and how many people have no freaking idea, but you might now look into it? All right, yeah, you're like, you don't know. So you gotta, like, I didn't know about it until, so, listen, I'm a hot commodity to a crematory, right? Like, they just, they want some of my, you know, my business. And so the crematory came knocking on my door and it was aquamation. I'm like, what? Um, so we have two, I live in Southern California, so we have two over there. Um, and, and it, you know, we're very eco-friendly out in, on the West Coast. And so that's why families are asking for it. And so I, might, I typically use a flame cremation, you know, for my crematory. But we have the option, and, and owners, maybe once a week. I don't even market it that much. I just say it's available. We'll know about it, and they ask for it. And so it's just an option I, I like to be able to, to give. Um, so what happens to the, you know, the body? right? The, the gushy stuff, right? So we're 70% water. So there you go. That, there goes 70% of it. The rest is reduced down, um, but it creates this, um, the effluent and it's, it's a, you know, kind of like a tea looking like, so there's not body parts like floating around or little bits of flesh. It is, it is completely fluid. All right. So it is, it is a liquid. Um, it's just, uh, create what's left is, uh, is amino acids, peptides, and sugars. And that can, um, you, most, most of the aquamation places actually, uh, it goes out into the, into the sewer to the, just like regular, like flushing the toilet, if you will, but it's just like tea. Um, and uh, some actually use it for, for fertilizer. And some, some crematories give bones from communals to, um, to be used as bone ashes, fertilizers to, to different gardens and, um, <clears throat> and things like that. So what's left? Like what remains with the body? Now in fire, typically everything is, is, is gone except for metal, right? Now you do have sometimes those little bits of metal, like the little teeny weeny um, dog that might have had a, a metal for like a kneecap thing or whatever, and then that's gone because the, the fire is so hot. It's like 1700 degrees or something crazy like that. So, it's, so it, it, sometimes metal is gone when it's tiny, but we're usually just left with metal. With aquamation, only protein-based material is going to be um, reduced down. So if you have a blanket or a toy left with the pet, that's going to actually remain there. So if you have the pet in there with their tennis ball, you're going to have a very clean tennis ball afterwards. And it looks bright yellow. Um, so if some family members wanted, that's OK. And they may actually get the blanket back. But with fire, we, you know, we oftentimes have owners that want the blanket to go with them or the, or the collar or something like that. Um, but in this case, the thing, the thing will probably come out afterwards. And one of the best discoveries, um, what could you possibly find left behind? <laughs> so, so, <laughs> this truly was, was in an a aquamation here in Florida, was a little thong was left behind. <laughs> Oh, there was two in there. There was two in there. Uh, the best part is when the, when the wife is like, that's not mine. And so, and then, and then, but um, so the remains, with aquamation, the, um, the ashes, and I'm going to show you some pictures of the ashes. The ashes are uh, usually lighter because the, um, just how the, how the process is done is that the flame um, <clears throat> It's going to have a little bit more discoloration, and, and, and sometimes people think it's a little bit more island sand-like. Uh, and then, um, now with, with fire, the, when, they, when they open up the retort, it needs to be cooled down. So there might be some cooling time, and then the ashes or the bone needs to, they usually put it in a pan, let's say, and, and let it sit out for a few hours to, to cool down, and then the next step in the process. With aquamation, the, the bone fragments are, are you know, wet. So they need to be dried. So they'll put them on trays or something like that and then and put it into a, into a um, dehumidifier area or a drying unit, if you will. Now that actually takes a lot of time as well, sometimes 20 hours or a day. So now we're, we do add now time to this process. So with fire, you're about two to three hours and then the processing, so within a day. With aquamation, it might be two or three days for the, for the whole process because of the drying time as well as the other, the, the initial um, deposition of the body. This, 
sorry to show some of these pictures, but it's what happens in our world. This is a fire cremation. And so um, a lot of people don't realize that with fire cremation, we are left with bone fragments. It's not just that final product of, of what looks like beach sand. Um, so you will see the, a mandible or a, a femoral head, and then, it's, and then it's processed and ground down. So that's with fire. Um, with uh, aquamation, this is similar kind of, if you will, and, but it's still in that wet, so it looks more gray or, or wet-like. And so it's, it's um, this, this is the aquatory near me in Orange County, and so they have trays almost like a restaurant tray um, system, and, they're, and, it's, and it's all tagged. I mean, they've got like five different places that, they've, that they know what tray is, is what pet. Um, and so then they're dried, and even the uh, communals or the, um, the group cremations are also dried and processed down. And in my area, they actually spread them out to sea. And then the next step is that grinding. So it's a, it's a big blender that grinds it down. And, and depending on the speed and the time, you can have the different coarseness of, of, the, of the final product. I know some of you are like, I did not know we're talking about this. And Amazon delivered that sucker. No. <laughs> Amazon Prime. That's... Okay, so like I said earlier, the, um, the, the greenhouse is, is what we all care about. And with Firebase, there's um, a lot of fossil fuels and, and there is um, you know, a big push to be more green. And so with, with aquamation, it's, it's definitely um, better for the environment. But, but the, uh, the other benefit too is that you're gonna get more ash back. So there's more bone fragment because with, with the heat-based or the flame-based, um, some of the bone is, you know, basically just incinerated, if you will. And uh, so we, we do tend to see that there's more uh, ashes left over. So there's a lot of different manufacturers for, um, for this, for, uh, for, cremate, for, this um, for aquamation. And I tell you this because it may be an option for you in your, in your practice to have a crematory. And so I don't know where my little case study girl is. She, she probably left because she's... She, she built a crematory two years after sitting in this lecture because she wanted to handle the cremation herself in her clinic. She was a technician. She came back and she talked to her owner about it. They invested in flame, you know, so they have a flame unit, but maybe this is, is a better option for you because you can then have it in your building. And so there's some, some plumbing and things like that. Yes? I have to... Yeah. Right, so zoning laws, uh, you know, unfortunately, sometimes the, the zoning departments don't know what the heck this is, so they don't know what to categorize this, so that could be good or bad, right? In South Florida, it's, it was very strict, and, so, and in California, very strict, and in California, strict for everything. Some other areas, they're like, all right, if it can go down the sewer, like, because there's no emissions, right? So, um, so, and usually in vet clinics, too, you get, a, you get away with a lot because that's a part of your service versus a separate business unit. But the machines are, are a little bit easier to install uh, and instead of a flame. And it, it's also, it's not hot. Right? Have you ever been to your crematory? It's, it's hot. You go in, there's like sweating. It's also loud. Um, I've, there's a crematory, there's a clinic near me and he has, and it's a separate like building basically off site. Like it's on his site, but it's off the main, main unit. Um, so the machine itself, this is kind of what it looks like. And it's, I'm probably, you know, I'm 6'1", so it might be, it's about eight feet high with this, you know, the um, machine part next to it, or the, or the computer rather. And so there's the chamber. Um, here's just another angle. And so you just need a couple of steps to, to reach into it. And um, in, in this machine particularly, it comes with like almost like a double decker. And <laughs> so there's two trays with these separators in between each one of them. And so, um, so the pets will be placed in those trays. <coughs> And then the two could be double deckered up. And so um, this one holds up to 400 pounds. So you can have seven cats and then seven cats on the top row and bottom row. Or you can have two large dogs and you can mix them up. So I know I'm out of, town, out of time. There's also bigger machines that can do m mass production. So that was a smaller one um, that you can you know, put in a clinic maybe easier. But there's also much larger ones for, uh, for a different type of production. So really, though, um, I want to just touch on for 10 seconds is the, the difference between private and individual. And that's where some of the concern is, because in, in fire cremation, there's also a disconnect with this between every, you know, for what we know. And, and there is a, a private will be one pet, one chamber. That is it. 
separated or individual, um, it means there might be multiple pets in that chamber. And some, some crematories do that well, well, where they have it you know, segmented or separated well, but the, you know, the heat base, there, there might be in each corner, let's say, and other crematories don't do this well at all. And so there is some discussion of, is aquamation truly a private? That, that row that I showed you with the separators, they're in their own cradles. So they are separated from each other. And whether or not that, that means they're private or not is not for me to decide here at this lecture. But I just, and I'm going to caution you for the next picture. This is what one would consider true private. It is that pet in that retort alone. And like I said, some crematories do separated well, where, where I'm okay. I had my own pet cremated with other pets, and I got her ashes returned because I know it's four corners. There are some, and this is the worst picture, some crematories where that is what they consider individual, or they even consider it private. There's no like rules or regulation of what they can call private. You got to ask. So I would not want my pet cremated with other pets like this. I would be okay if my pet was here and another one was there and a kitty cat up there. Like to me, I'm like, she's got friends. I, like I'm okay with it. Some people are not okay with it. The point is you gotta know what your crematory. So Kathy, who's in this audience in the back, she can give a little raise of her hands. She also made that, that book that Danny was mentioning earlier. She does consulting and a big part of, she has, she has how many machines, two? Two, two machines, the, the pet 400s two pet 400s in Colorado, and she's been doing it for years. Um, so if you have any questions, she does consulting just on aquamation. We do not, but, um, but we are opening our own, our own aquamation in Florida, two, two places in, in northern and southern Florida this year. So that's why we're learning about it, and it's just something to be able to offer. So that is, and Kathy, there you go, there's your website. Any questions? So that's uh, so the cost of the owner. My my aquamation in Southern California, it is a little bit more expensive, maybe about fifty dollars. Is the cost to run it different? That's really going to be on the price of your water in the area versus versus gas. So um, for me, when I when I charge owners, let's say it's two fifty for a private, I won't charge an owner more to do aquamation. I don't want to be like you could do this for fifty dollars more. It does cost me more. But I'm okay with that. If a family wants that experience, I'm not going to you know, raise the price. But depending on your area with water, in Southern California, water is a commodity, right? Ooh, it's kind of. Yes? What happens to any drug metabolism? Uh, what happens to any what? Any drug metabolism. Oh, that's a good question. What happens to any drugs? Kathy, do you know? It's, you gone. it's gone. That's what I was going to say. I wanted to make sure it's gone. The only thing that's left is the peptides, the, the sugars, and the amino acids, and water. The tea. That's why it can go into our, into our, into our you know, non-potable water, it's like flushed, if you will, the same area that that goes. Do you know how many people put bleach down their drains, put, clean out their you know, uh, brushes from paint? You pee out, that's a good, you pee out medications, right? So there's that, so it's, it's nothing, yes. And you guys can leave if you want to scatter, it's okay, I won't take offense to it. So can you add remains to stepping stones? Yeah, you can add remains to anything, right? So fire or aquamation. I've had some people do the stepping stones, which I think is kind of a you know, fun idea, if you will. I hate to you know, fun, but there's diamonds. There's other things that can be created from it. It's, it's very interesting, all the unique ideas you can have. Um, so I'm fine with any of those unique options. 